patients, I want to present uh, the next uh, speaker, Insights of the Impact of COVID-19 on the South Asian Population with Metabolic Syndrome. This is Professor Pradeep Chaubi from India. Professor, it's a great honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, I would uh, like to discuss about our uh, generally, we discuss about Asian subcontinent, but uh, I'm specifically uh, trying to discuss about the South Asian because we are quite different. So if you really look at, of course, I bring greetings uh, from New Delhi, India. And uh, of course, as you just mentioned, that uh, my presentation will be on the uh, insight of uh, the academics, um, the COVID infection. Can I change the slide? Uh, can you see it? Yes, please. Okay, so um, we all know that I think the whole world is uh, uh, affected by COVID-19 problem. And uh, this is the Asian map, which you can see the large 60% uh, uh, mass is there, the land mass is uh, in Asia. But what I will be discussing and concentrating more on South Asia, which India being the largest uh, country, we have uh, Pakistan, we have got Bangladesh, we have got Nepal, and also we have included Sri Lanka to this. Now, if you really look at this, we have got almost about 22 to 23% of the world's population living uh, in this uh, southern part of uh, Asia. But well, to uh, our pleasant surprise, we still have less than 25,000, uh, uh, approximately 25,000 patients, uh, as it on 20th last uh, uh, night, the calculations which have been there. And also, uh, interestingly, we have less than 1,000 mortalities. So uh, it also gives us the view that there may be something different with us. And uh, I would like to see how things are different uh, with this uh, uh, continent. If you look at the epidemiology, you will see that, um, of course, this region is very densely populated and uh, we have metabolic uh, syndromes that uh, even lower BMI. And as you all know that uh, Asians, our BMI cutoff is 2.5 less than the Western standards. That also means that we have obese patients and having the comorbidity like a pre-diabetic, diabetes, um, sleep apnea, et cetera. But we also have metabolic problems with uh, even average weight or overweight weight also. That means that we have a bigger metabolic syndrome population as compared to the obesity problem. The Chinese experience has shown that uh, COVID infection with metabolic syndrome is a sinister combination, which uh, brings really very, very poor outcomes. Patients suffer a lot, a longer period, and they go through quite a bit of rough uh, phase of the disease. And they also acquire it a little uh, early. So the metalysis done by 46,248 cases in China confirms what exactly uh, it is. Now, if you really look at that, we're talking of young obese patients, the patients with age less than 60, and their hospitalization rate between 30 and 35 BMI is twice than the average uh, population, average weighing person. If the BMI goes beyond 35, of course, it is even more, but the problem is of the critical care, which goes up to 3.6 uh, times more for these patients. Now, I think many times uh, 
you know, you must be reading about it that India is doing less number of tests. Yes, certainly with the uh, population of India, uh, 1.3 billion, the, it's not possible to test so many persons, neither the kits are available, neither the logistically it is possible. But if you really look at when you do 100 cases, investigate them, how many are positive? So if you can look at the chart, India, I think out of 100, we get 4.4 patients as positive patients as compared to Pakistan, which is 9%, Bangladesh is 8 Sri Lanka is 6 So you see the lower range in the Asia-Pacific region. The moment you move on to West, USA, you get out of 100, you get almost 19 patients positive. And France is 22%. Spain is even bad. I mean, it's worse, 28 cases are positive. And Italy, of course, we all know, 24%. So India definitely is doing, in this subcontinent, we are doing lesser cases. But at the same time, we have got lesser positive cases also. And I'm sure I will like to discuss a little bit uh, on, on this issue. And uh, let's see, our, what are the facts of our subcontinent? How these two, three months which have gone, what we have done? First of all, I think India did a very early lockdown. And I, I will discuss all these points uh, um, in, in uh, my coming presentation. Another point comes about the BC vaccination. Then we discuss about the SCQ prophylaxis as well as treatment. Partial herd immunity is, is it there? Well, because Asian subcontinent, India has got a younger population as compared to the Western, where there are more senior population. And of course, ambient high temperature, temperate climate, which has shown in India and also in Vietnam, et cetera. Now look at the Indian timelines, you know, because we are very accurate on that. The suspected, we suspended visa on 13th March when we had just a couple of hundred cases uh, uh, in, in the whole country. Then we stopped the arrival and departure of national and international on 19th March. On day 49, after our first case was reported on 30th January in southern part of India. We stopped all public transportation within 52 days after the first case was recorded. Then there was so-called Janta curfew, which was announced for a day on Sunday, just as a sort of trailer to see how uh, things behave. And first lockdown was on 53 days after the first case was, positive case was detected. Then the lockdown was again extended on 75th day. And now we have got a lockdown up to 3rd of May, which will complete 40 days of lockdown. Now you see how it has brought benefit or so-called lesser problems. Before black down, um, uh, lockdown, our doubling rate was three days. Then after lockdown, the doubling rate every was six days. At the moment, today morning, the, according to our statistics, our uh, doubling time is 7.5 days. At the end, when we finish on 3rd May, it is projected their doubling time of uh, 11 days we should be able to achieve. Now, very quick glance on the um, diagrammatic sort of thing. The first day, 31st January, the one now case number one was detected. Then we went on 2nd March, that was 32 days after the first case, we went uh, up to confirmed cases of five, just five cases in 32 days in such a vast country. We moved on to 13th March and we had 81 uh, confirmed cases. And this was day 43 after the first case. Then we moved on 50th day, 20th March, and we had 244 cases in the population of 1.3 billion. On 21st, the D day was 53rd day after the first case, and we had 415 cases in the whole country. And that is the day when we had the complete lockdown of the country. And on 2nd uh, April, of course, 
it was uh, 2,000 cases as we see doubling, and then an extended lockdown was called for on 19th April. At the moment, today, yesterday night at 10.45, we have 17,615 cases. Of course, uh, 2,854 have recovered, and deaths are uh, 559. The typical problem the country faced during this period was migratory population. It is the labor, daily wages, who migrate from one uh, lesser uh, uh, economically, uh, lesser uh, um, strong states to the metros. So the problem was how to control them because they want to go back to their state, which may be a couple of hundred kilometer, maybe two or 3,000 kilometers away from the place where they're working. So what was their problem? In our assessment, food was not really a problem. Maybe for a day it was a problem, but the government provided food and shelter to all of them. The wages, of course, they were not getting. So the government of India provided in their bank uh, about 5,000 uh, rupees in their bank for their expenses. But the biggest problem was their homesickness. We, you know, then Asians, we are quite you know, family oriented and living in a joint family with grandparents and the parents. So this was the main reason. And, but fortunately it has settled over a period of time. Now, I think uh, very quickly, BCG vaccination, what is our observation? What we have seen, wherever the countries have vaccinated, the COVID chances are 38.4 per million population whereas the death, death rate is 4.28 million per uh, the two uh, 4.28 per million whereas wherever the vaccination has not been done as compulsory the it really jumps maybe 10 times the uh, the chances of getting covid infection and very very high mortality there is no uh, scientific reason why we are talking about it but this is an observation hsq I think uh, we all know that it does not uh, uh, kill the virus or reduce the number of virus, but in uh, smaller studies, it has also shown the largest studies from, from China, 150 patients, which has definitely shown that the white blood count goes up and the CRP level goes down. And this is what helps in reducing their stay in the hospital and also sometimes uh, uh, the early discharge and a better recovery and lesser sufferings. Just coming to my last couple of uh, this thing, we are also talking about the partial herd immunity because India had uh, uh, the issues related with COVID series of viruses like dengue fever, the chikungunya, and many types of influenza. So is there some herd uh, immunity uh, to uh, us, which may be partial in nature, which reduces the number. And uh, these are my final slides. Today, it's all yesterday night at 10.45. You can see USA uh, at the highest level. And India, you see, is about 16,100 uh, cases and as compared to 4.9, uh, 0.49 millions uh, in other countries. So you can see the Western population is having more number of cases and also you will see that there are more deaths in the Western world as compared to our densely populated, populated uh, countries. And also, if you see the uh, investigations in the positive cases, which you get after doing 100 uh, investigations, you can say that India after 100, you can just get, which I have already discussed that you get 4.4 positive cases. Now. This is my last slide. I think, unfortunately, uh, in our society, what we are battling is the stigma of having a COVID positive uh, uh, level uh, on the assessment. This, unfortunately, is true even for the medical professionals, the paramedical staff, the persons who are living in a rented place, if they're a doctor and medical people, there seems to be a stigma because they feel that. Uh, and I'm sure only time will tell us how we have to believe. Government is taking all possible actions 
are getting very, very strict on these things. And, and of course, we have some lights of hope at the end of the tunnel. We will see after 3rd May how the country and the subcontinent behaves when the lockdown is lifted. And we are keeping our fingers crossed. And I hope then by that time, we, will, we would flatten the curve. We will have more infrastructure available. We will have more hospitals equipped with uh, dealing with these COVID patients. And uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, I would love to uh, answer your questions at the end of the session.